Hi everyone, in today's lore video I'm going to explore the equipment of the Cadian Shock Troopers. It's been a while since I've done a proper lore video and I'll draw my experience as a former rifleman in the Australian Army to give a sense of how the equipment would be to use and how realistic it is. A quick point on the word realistic is we are exploring a fictional universe uh, 39,000 years away with space goblins, elves and bugs. So I need to take a few liberties with this but I'm sure you get the point here. A bit about my military service is I served eight years in the Australian Army Reserve, um, each reaching the modest rank of Lance Corporal, and served two peacekeeping deployments in the Solomon Islands. I partook in all aspects of infantry training, including jungle school, parachute school, all small arms training, medium direct fire weapons, and heavy weapons, including the 50 cal and Mark 19 grenade launcher. I never saw active combat service in Iraq or Afghanistan, however I trained at the highest level, but never actually ended up serving in Australian Special Forces. So from that, um, if you're serving um, or a veteran, let me know what you think about this topic as we explore the equipment of our favorite uh, toy soldiers. All right, let's start from the bottom up, reviewing the Cadian's footwear. The new miniatures are wearing gaiters over their black boots, and this is an evolution on the older Cadian miniatures, which appear to have had armor sat on top of their boots on their ankles. While the designers of the old miniatures thought wearing armor on your ankles would be helpful is puzzling, but let's remember these were designed way back in the 90s, so with some different ideas in mind. The use of gaiters in modern military is actually quite limited, um, and in my experience I never used them, but I do have a now wear them when I go trekking in the wilderness of the UK, and they prevent sticks, stones, mud or dust getting into your boots and causing problems with your feet. Also, they act as a barrier to moisture and wet soaking into the bottom of your trousers as you walk through wet, long grass. So for our Cadians, uh, these gaiters are definitely very plausible and will add a degree of comfort on the battlefields of the 41st millennium. Okay, moving up the uniform, we now go to their knee pads. These knee pads are an addition to the, two, uh, to the new miniatures and are a completely realistic addition. Anybody who served in the infantry will know the agony of sore knees. Um, when patrolling or conducting an attack, an infantryman is often taking a knee or on their stomach crawling forward. The reason for this is to simply lower one's profile present a lower target to the enemy. This is clearly logical, but try doing this when you're laden with armor, equipment and weapon, kneeling onto the ground which could be littered with stones, rubble, sticks, tree roots, glass, shell casings or simply hard cement. You need to take an absolute battering um, and a lot of veterans will have serious knee challenges and injuries way after their service. Knee pads help here by providing protection and cushioning, preventing injury, and uh, during my service we wore knee pads attached by Velcro straps, much like those you would wear when you're skating or riding a push bike. The problem with this style was that it would slip down as you moved about and would end up around your ankles doing absolutely nothing. More modern uniforms now have knee pads sewn into trouser legs to keep them in place, and you may have seen them worn by the Ukrainian army as they fight against Russia. So for our Cadian shock troops, um, they will at least have their knees less injured in the distant far future. Whilst the knee pads on the miniatures look a bit weird, principally this is completely realistic. Alright, now moving on to their belt and pouches, otherwise known as webbing. The concept of webbing has been around for well over 100 years, with a sturdy belt with pouches, water canteens, bayonet and maybe a pistol attached to it. A harness is also included to keep the belt up, as to just rely upon a belt uh, itself would be insufficient to support all the weight from the kit. During my service, a combat load was seven magazines of 30 rounds, two frag grenades, a bayonet, two litres of water, 24 hours of uh, rations, night vision equipment, a weapon cleaning kit, a short rope, and maybe also a short range radio, and also basic field dressings. This will weigh about 10 kilos, and the caddy miniatures uh, do seem to be carrying a little bit less on their webbing, uh, but at least they do also do have rucksacks which could carry some additional kit. Also, it should be mentioned uh, that if this is a fictional universe where a Lasgun magazine can fire 150 shots, so clearly requiring a lot less magazines to be carried as opposed to five magazines of 30 rifle uh, rounds in modern armies. I'd say the Cadian webbing and rucksacks look very realistic, albeit probably a little bit on the lighter side of things. For example, carrying just one litre of water in a single canteen would significantly limit how far a squad could patrol before they need resupply. However, principally the kit looks spot on. 
What is, however, a little bit less realistic is the idea of dangling grenades on a harness. This is very poor practice, posing a significant risk to, uh, to the user. As you know, grenades work on a ring being pulled, allowing a spring-loaded lever to flip over and strike the ignition cap before detonating four and a half to five seconds later. Uh, we would always carry grenades in the Australian Army in an individual closed pouch that kept gr uh, the grenade ring and lever safely in place. If you were crawling along the ground or moving through thick closed country such as forest or jungle, the worst could happen uh, with the ring somehow being dislodged and the lever released. When I went through infantry school where I was taught how to use grenades, there was a story of a bloke crawling in a life fire exercise with grenades rolling around unsecured in a pouch where one of the pins became dislodged and blew him clean in half. This incident led to the standing order that grenades be kept in enclosed individual pouches and also the development of a new grenade with a much more secure pin. So yep, uh, the way the grenades are modelled on the miniatures is unrealistic but carrying multiple grenades is definitely very realistic. Okay, now let's move on to the armor and helmet of the Cadians. Modern armor systems utilize plate armor on front and back of the body, which covers the major uh, organs. These are usually enough to stop a rifle round from penetrating, and the remainder of the armor set is Kevlar, which can stop shrapnel or pistol rounds. As you can see, uh, the modern ones cover only the torso with no protection for the shoulders. From my experience, um, shoulder protection was only worn by explosive ordnance uh, device specialists defusing bombs or by gunners sitting in a turret of an armoured vehicle as counter to IEDs or roadside bombs which were prevalent in the Iraq-Afghanistan wars. Looking at the Cadian armour, it does look somewhat ergonomic, however overheating would definitely be a problem and likewise would also be rubbing and chafing. Now you would wonder what does rubbing and chafing have anything to do with anything, uh, but if you spend say two weeks in the field, not showering and constantly sweating, it becomes a very serious problem. And sometimes being so bad that blokes have to be medevaced out. I knew plenty of blokes who experienced horrendous chafing either between their thighs or against their webbing or pack, and it directly impacts their fighting ability. However, overall, I'm okay with the, the look of the Cadian armor. Now the helmets need a bit more discussion. On a positive, the use of a, a done-up chin strap is very in line with current thinking, keeping the a thing simply attached to your head as you move about. The idea of not having it done up and uh, dangling around, not fastened to your chin, is something which was around in the Vietnam uh, War and probably earlier as well in the Second World War. The overall helmet structure is probably a bit too big, with the ears being enclosed not being a good idea. Modern helmets don't fully cover the ears, and more advanced ones actually have the helmet sitting quite high, allowing for the use of ear protection to be fitted quite easily. The Cadians having their ears covered is troublesome, in the sense it reduces their ability to hear anything. You may wonder what this has to do with anything, but being able to hear the smallest sound is very important when patrolling or in a listening post to detect the enemy, and it could be the difference between life and death. Maybe their helmets have got inbuilt microphones to amplify the surrounding sound, However, this isn't something I've heard spoken about in any Ashtamilantaram stories or novels. Likewise, they may include inbuilt short-range voxcasters, but again, it's not mentioned in most stories I've listened to. Another point on the helmet is a small lip that's been added to the new miniatures, acting as a mini-visor. The idea of a lipped helmet as a mini-visor isn't something used by many modern militaries, however, the principle is quite sound. If Arcadians are deployed to a hot uh, planet with lots of sunshine, or simply standing on guard duty in the sun, this lip could cut out some of the glare that would detract um, and make things a bit more uncomfortable. Sure, they may have sunglasses or goggles that some of the miniatures are modelled with, whether having the option is obviously always great. Final piece on the helmets um, is that the new miniatures are correctly modelled with the left and right of the helmet set further back from the sides of their eyes. The older miniatures had their helmets almost enclosing their eyes on the left and right, and this is highly impractical, uh, reducing peripheral vision. Like with the covered ears, this would detract from situational awareness, also known as, what, as knowing what's going on around you, uh, which is a key aspect of any fighting individual. During my training, we were constantly drilled about uh, the importance of maintaining situational awareness. This was something that gets uh, degraded with fatigue, physical exertion, 
fear and the sheer sound and percussion of battle. Throw in a helmet uh, that cuts out your peripheral vision and things get even harder. So from all of that, the Cadian helmets um, are not too bad except for the enclosed ears as I spoke about. Okay, lastly, let's look at their weapons. Here, I'm not going to comment on the realism of a las gun or plasma gun because that obviously would be silly. Um, however, the details like sling attachments on both ends of the las guns is actually a very, very accurate piece of uh, modeling. A sling on a weapon is less about helping you to hold the weapon upright in two hands, um, but more about attaching the sling when required and then allowing you to use both your hands with a weapon slung to pick up heavy equipment, for example. Another cool detail on uh, one of the las guns is what seems to be some elastic bands on the buttstock. This is something I did and so that many other soldiers in the army um, and elastic bands were used to secure miscellaneous kit uh, like sealing something in a protective pouch, avoiding the wet with a rubber band acting as um, a closing device. Another interesting detail on the plasma gunner is their left hand um, seems to be wearing an asbestos glove to protect from the heat of the weapon. The principle of this comes from World War II era weapons uh, where this allowed them to change a hot barrel. I personally never used an asbestos glove um, although there were plenty of times when I've actually could have used one, it would have been quite helpful. I took part in direct fire support weapon training um, with MAG-58 machine guns on tripods, firing hundreds if not thousands of rounds at a time. The weapon would become red if not white hot and could flat out melt skin if the weapon was mishandled. So this is actually quite a nice detail added by Games Workshop. Right, so from all of that, we can say the new Cadian Shock Troop miniatures have been well modelled reflecting what would be a realistic equipment they would carry on the battlefield. Sure, they could be probably carrying a bit more uh, pouches on their webbing, and likewise maybe some extra grenades uh, tucked away in the correct pouches, uh, but principally they look absolutely realistic. So yep, what do you think of this topic? Uh, hopefully it was interesting, and how realistic do you think the Cadian Shock Troop equipment is? As I said at the start of the video, this is clearly a fictional universe, have a hopefully um, still interesting topic to explore and let me know in the comments. So if you enjoyed this video and want to support me you can do so for like, comment or by subscribing, joining my Patreon platoon or simply watching any of my other YouTube videos. And massive thanks to my current supporters. Let's get your bayonet sharp, let's go oiled. Faith from the Emperor Strong, Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn, Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten, Tank Commander Mitchell, Colour Sergeant Dupont, Sergeants Adal, the Colonel Merrill, Veteran Gibson, Hall, Lundine, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tomkin, Conscript England, Gilliam, Goodwin.